All right, all. Like the title suggests, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock out our GPU or the integrated graphics of the Ryzen APU. Let me roll the intro, and we'll get into the video. All right, all. Like I said, in the intro and the title suggests, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock out our GPU or the integrated graphics of the Ryzen APU. And like I've said in all my overclocking videos, this is how you do it. I hold no responsibility if you mess up your CPU or your motherboard by doing this. You take that responsibility yourself. In today's sample, I'm going to be using the Ryzen 2400G. I'm going to run down the specs of the system that I'm using, just in case you're curious. I have the RAID Max Blade ATX case. I'm running the Ryzen 5 2400G with uh, Vega 11 graphics. I'm running the Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard. I also have 16 gigs of the XPG Gamic D10 RAM. Uh, it's running the stock speeds at 2666. I'm also running an Intel 730 240 gig SSD. I'm running the Corsair Series 550 watt 80 plus bronze certified non-modular power supply. And what's going to really vary as if you're running the 2400G, I'm also using the AMD Wraith Spire LED cooler instead of the stock cooler. Now this should pretty well take effect as long as you're using the Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard. This should take effect on any APU that you're running. You know, you're looking at the 2200G, the 2400G, the 3200G, the 3400G, any of the Athlon processors that's out for Ryzen that has an integrated graphics. If you go into your BIOS and you look for the setting and your CPU don't have onboard graphics, it's like the 1600, the 1500, 1700, 2600, 3600, anything that don't have a G at the end of it, it ain't going to be there. It just ain't going to show up or it'll be grayed out and you can't do no, make no changes to it. That's because these other processors don't have a iGPU one. And even if you're running the exact same motherboard, exact same setup with the exact same processor I got, you're what you can get out of yours may vary some. Verizon, the Vega 11 graphics, they run out of the box stock at 1250 megahertz. I did pretty good on mine, I think. I got 1575 megahertz out of mine. That's a pretty good little boost in clock speed on the iGPU. And I'm going to say it again. Yours may vary. It all depends on the silicon lottery. I didn't really stress test mine. You're going to want to stress test yours and make sure it's going to be stable. Me, I got mine to run at 1575 and I was able to run Heaven Benchmark, so that's what I stuck with. Heaven Benchmark is the only software that I ran to show you the kind of performance increase I got. I didn't have time to run a bunch of different games, you know. So if you're going to ask what kind of performance gains you can get in this game or this game or that game, I don't know. You'll have to you'll have to overclock your own and see what kind of results you get and see see if you're happy with the results of it or not. Like I said, it all depends on your CPU and the silicon lottery, how good of a processor you actually got. On these cheaper motherboards and budget motherboards like the Gigabyte B450 MDS3H, like I mentioned in the in the clip that I've got of me showing you how to overclock it, whenever I was doing my overclocking of the CPU cores instead of the iGPU cores, I was running into a power limitation that I couldn't get it beyond a certain point because of the power limit. And that's because of the VRMs on, it, on the motherboard. Because of these VRM limits on these, I would not suggest overclocking your CPU and your iGPU both. I'd pick one over the other, you know, whichever one you'd rather it be overclocking. So with all that being said, let me show you the clip of how to overclock that iGPU, and I'll show you the results of the heaven benchmark that I've got and whatnot, and I'll be back with the conclusion to the video. Alright y'all, now to be able to overclock your iGPU with the Ryzen APU, you need to get into the BIOS, I guess. Windows 10 desktop, go down to your windows, go to power, go to restart, and keep tapping your delete key, that way we can get into the BIOS. Okay, there we are in the BIOS. Okay guys, underneath the MIT tab up here top, go down to Advanced Frequency Settings. And what you're looking for is your GFX Clock Frequency. 
energy FX core voltage when you first go into it it's going to say auto right here you double click on auto I've already did some testing with mine I know what I can get out of mine so I'm going to type in one five seven five make sure you hit the enter button now if you don't do this if you leave this GFX core voltage on auto it will not take effect so you have to change this to something AMD and some other resources says you can go up to 1.4 1.45 volts I don't like pushing mine that hard especially on these budget or cheaper motherboards so here where it says auto I'm going to double click on it hit 1.35 which is going to pop it up to 1.35 volts just like that and when it when you hit enter it'll say 1.35000 V for 1.3 volts and from this point on you can either hit F10 on your keyboard which will get you the save and exit setup or you can come over here and hit save and exit hit save and exit then you hit yes and it will overclock your IGPU for you all right all I showed you the clip of how to get that done and how to go into your BIOS if for some reason some people said that you know on some other videos they said you know by tapping the delete key they can't get into the BIOS maybe they ain't clicking it quick enough or whatever if not I've got a video out showing you how to get into your BIOS from Windows 10 desktop I'll put a link to it up here for you if you like go check out that video if for some reason you can't get into the BIOS by clicking by tapping your delete key maybe your system is booting too fast or something and you can't get into it there is a way to do it through Windows 10 and all my testing was done on the latest version of Windows, Windows 10, I think it was 2004 version, I think is what it was up to. All my AMD uh, graphics drivers was up to date on the, for the Vega 11 graphics. It was a clean install of Windows. The only thing that was actually added to the machine was hardware monitor for I could show you, prove you, to you that the overclock actually token and that have a benchmark. That's the only thing that was added on top of the Windows 10. It's pretty well clean install. That way it's Apple to the Apples, you know, your what your computer running in the background and whatnot is gonna be different from what I've done on mine. But this was a complete absolute clean install of Windows 10 updated to the latest version of the day's date, which is seven twelve of twenty twenty. Is the best way I could figure out how to do this. So that was what everything was running at. What kind of performance did I get? What kind of boost did I get out of it? The Vega 11 graphics, they normally run at about 1250 megahertz. I got mine up to 1575 megahertz. That's a 325 megahertz difference. That ought to make a pretty good, pretty good gain in the graphics performance of your GPU. Also, I forgot to mention, I am running the, I got a video out on how to dedicate more memory to your iGPU, which I did not do in this video. This was set at auto. It was automatically determining how much memory, of the system memory, that it was running. You know, like I said, I didn't set it to two gigabytes or nothing like that. The processor and the motherboard was communicating to each other, and they was deciding how much RAM it was using. As far as the memory speed, no matter what you do, there's nothing in the BIOS you can change this. You, there's nothing you can do with it. It runs at half of the speed that the system memory is running. So, like in my instance, my memory is running 2666, or it says 2667. 2666 is what this RAM kit runs at out of the box. So, in these clips of the Heaven Benchmark, it'll show you running memory speed of 1333. I can't find nothing in the BIOS where you can change this, where you can use faster memory speed. I tried to do this with MSI Afterburner. I didn't try AMD Ryzen Master, but I did try Afterburner because it's a very popular uh, GPU overclocking software. But for some reason, whenever I put my numbers into MSI Afterburner, it would not accept it. Every time I put in, you know, if I put in anything over the over what it was at stock, and hit the apply button it automatically kick it back down the stock so as far as I can determine the only way to actually overclock the IGPU in these things is through the BIOS which I just showed you how to do alright so now you all are interested in what kind of performance gains I got 
Well, I got a couple screenshots of that after the Heaven Benchmark is ran. I took a couple photo shots of it showing you what the, G, the IGPU was running to prove to you the overclock did work, what I showed you was right, and what kind of scores I got. Let me flip you over here to the screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we go. Here's the Heaven Benchmarks. On the left hand side over here, you have the stock. And you look under the GPU uh, GPU clock, it says graphics, it was running at 1239. The overclocks over here on the right, it's running at 1575, it was reading 1575 megahertz. It was only 99% usage. At stock speeds, I was getting 30.4 frames per second. Overclock, I was getting 33.1. My score went from the 767 and went up to 835. My minimum frames was 18.7 and it bumped up to 19.4. My max frame was 62 at stock and it bumped up to 68.9. If you look down here, it ain't quite 1080p, 1920 by 1080p. And the reason for this is because I was running in window mode. You have to run and have a benchmark in window mode to be able to pull up this CPU hardware monitor to show you what kind of speeds I was actually getting on my GPU and it took effect. That's why it ain't exactly 1920 by 1080. But uh, it's, you know, these both ran to the exact same settings. You know, these all ran at direct uh, 3D11. They was all ran at 1920 by 1071. They all ran at a custom preset. They were all at a quality high setting. So that gives you a pretty good idea of the boost. And like I said, you know, I went from 1239 or 1250s, what, these things are supposed to be run that out of the box. I went from 1200, say 1240, up to a 1574, 1575. You know, you're looking at a pretty good increase. You're looking at 300 plus megahertz. I believe a 300, 300 megahertz bump in your IGP performance on these kind of chips would be pretty good, pretty good experience in your games. Like I said earlier, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I couldn't test every game out there. There's a lot of different games. Of course, if you're running an APU, I'm hoping you, that you're just running like a, you know, CSGO or something like that. Maybe you're just running an APU just to buy time until you can save up for a discrete graphics card or something like that. But this is the way you overclock it, and you get a little bit better performance out of it. I've said before, especially on these budget or cheaper motherboards, I don't recommend doing the CPU cores, the IGPU cores at the same exact time. There's a reason for this, and it's because of the power limits on them. Now, the VRMs on these motherboards can only produce so much power. And it's running an IGPU, which is baked into or built into the CPU. So I'd take kind of take your pick of which one you want to overclock, the IGPU cores or the CPU cores. That may vary. It's all up to you. You know, you may want to try to overclock both of them. And like I've said in all my overclocking videos, this is how you do it. I hold no responsibility if you mess up your CPU or your motherboard by doing this. You take that responsibility yourself. Um, but that's the kind of performance I got out of mine. And I've said it before, you know, even though you're running a 2400G with this motherboard, what you get out of it may vary from what I got out of mine. Depending on the silicon lottery, how good the processor is, you may do better than me. You may do worse than me. This is what I got mine to. If I went over... 1575 megahertz on my IGPU, you know, it just black screen on me. It wouldn't do nothing. And if you get to the point where it hard locks on you, you know, you may have to pull the side panel off your computer and reset your CMOS, which there's several ways you can do that. Maybe I'll do a video on that. You know, you, a lot of motherboards have a clear CMOS button. These budget motherboards or cheaper motherboards like I'm running, you know, you got two pins that you cross with a piece of metal with a key or a screwdriver or something. It will reset them. Or you have to pull out the CMOS battery and unplug it and do that, do it that way. Do it the old-fashioned way. Um, you know, just like overclocking anything else, sometimes you may end up into a hard lock where you have to reset your BIOS, and that's the way you do it. But that's the way you overclock your IGPU or your integrated graphics on the APU for Ryzen systems. I hope you got a little bit of information out of this or just... Just fixed a little bit of a curiosity that you had on what you could actually maybe push your 2400G to by watching this video. That's going to pretty well wrap it up for today's video, guys. Make sure you go down and hit that like button if you liked what you saw here today. There's that subscribe button and notification bell if you really liked what you saw here and you like to become part of the community I'm trying to build here on the channel. 
Don't forget that like button, that dislike button. There's that comment section. I go through them every weekend on my live stream when I get time to do it. It's usually Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Here lately, since I've been working so much overtime, it's been Saturday evenings at 5 p.m. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to come over there and follow me. I won't kill your inbox. I don't put a whole lot up on it. But there is links in the description for that as well. And with all that being said, you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.